first of our two visits to the P&O Irish Sea Officer Rally Cross Grand Prix. Today we concentrate on the supercars, where we've got quality if not quantity, but oh, what quality. Well, it's a Ford Focus with most of the running gear of my old escort in them. Basically, it's a uh, world rally car. It's not a, a car that came from Cologne. It wasn't, it wasn't built in uh, TPA, but the majority of the parts were supplied by them. And to be honest, a, a car like this couldn't be built without their help. This car probably been built up in 1986. And I think that's when the majority of them were built. It looks like an escort car was ever. Oh yeah, super escort car, but the best one this year today. We're ready for heat one and what a heat it will be. That's Maloney on the back row, but you can see up the outside there taking a real flyer. Carnegie from the second row over the grass misses the apex through it. Now this is a super little circuit. Up the hill onto the tarmac. Gibson at work in the metro. That's Carnegie out on the loose again. Not quite sure if this car is going to handle really well for him. The V6 really coming through. The little fiesta there and in the background Andy Grant from Devon. But the big surprise is in there, in fifth place, is actually the man Tony Bell, who is always going to be the big opposition to Carnegie. True, true goes Gibson. Then we have the man from Limerick, who admits to being 50 plus fat, at which rate we're not sure. We're looking out through Gibson's car, is it Tony Bell? It's Gibson's car, across the grass again, not using that, onto the loose up this hill and a very tight turn in by Carnegie that time he lose a little bit of time and Gibson's on his tail Alan. And Gibson's giving away at least 200 brake horsepower here in the normally aspirated uh, 6 r 4 We're aboard this brand new Ford Focus only on its second outing. We're shadowing it now with Gibson, the current Irish Rallycross champion. And you can see little bits there where he loses out a little bit wide there. Gibson using that really tight turn in across the gas they come. I'm not sure that Gibson just at the moment doesn't have the legs of Carnegie. Carnegie with that all sequential gearbox, bang, 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 up three gears, down two, again out wide, and this is where Gibson was closing in on them, but after each run you'll see this improve because they're going to tune the suspension with this circuit. So a new car and all kinds of new settings, but look at John Maloney back after a year's layoff where he broke his back just exactly a year ago at Mandela. Incredibly brave now that he comes back. So one win already from Dan McCarney, the Dubliner who is currently the British champion. But what power has he got to play with in this car? Around 600 to 650. That, it wouldn't take long to get to 60 miles an hour. No, around two seconds. Or so. With the normally aspirated C25, with the coming up on about 400 milli bit horse. The last time, and now it's a couple of years since it was tested on the dyno, but it was giving out 272 brake horsepower, which is an awful horsepower. So it doesn't take long to get 60 miles an hour? Uh, I believe under two seconds. Under two seconds. And under two seconds it'll have to be. Look at the start from Gibson. He was on the front row with Bell, but there's the man with the 600 knot brake horsepower, John Maloney. Bell there in the Opal and look at the speed of that. We're looking at the back of Gibson's car. We press the camera around and in the front it is Gibson and Maloney this time from Bell and then from Carnegie. So Lawrence Gibson in the little metro at the moment chasing that John Maloney in that very, very powerful escort and renewed. He may have broken his back but not his spirit. And as you say, Brian, the big surprise here is that Tony Bell is nowhere in it. He won the first round, uh, had a major accident last year and recovered from that. But it's all up front here at the moment. This amazing man, John Maloney, who will be 60 this year and doesn't look a day over about 25 at the moment. Just driving brilliantly.
down to the end of the stairs, they come across the loose, and then they come into a very tight chicane where they cut across it. Left, right, it's lots of loose there, as you can see. Very, very quick indeed on the loose. Over the curb there, back onto the loose here. You've got to turn in just before you get to the loose. As you come off the loose, there's a small tarmac chicane. You'll see them come through it straight in over the front of Gibson gaining there as they come out onto the street just where the flag is, and then they're back down the straight again. But Gibson has the legs of the circuit. And has the legs of the Focus, which is disappearing behind him there. The Gibson family virtually live here at Nuts Corner because if Dad's not rally crossing, his son Ryan is winning kart races. So out again, you can see he lets it drift out. But John won't be put off by that. He just looked the odd look in the mirror. Once he has the power, once he can get out of the corners, but Lawrence, in fairness, is able to come in very, very tight, very close to the tires and close up. He may be down on brake horsepower, but not on driving ability. He has the tail out as far as you can get it there as John Maloney turns in. And this circuit here we see in a replay that Gibson's done a lot of damage there, hit that tyres, and the whole uh, fiberglass front end of the 604 has virtually disintegrated. Out again, John goes, you can see it has <laughs> slowed them down to one beat, a bit of a flap there as they come through on the grass again, but that's the circuit as it is through the chequered flag, and that one is down to Maloney. Third heat thumbs up for it. It's again. Look at our man, but look at the start of Tony Bell. But I think a little red light on the right came on to tell you, Tony. I think you anticipated now. Anticipate that light. And not only to go back onto the grid, you go back to the back of the grid. So that is room. All Tony Bells. He's right at back. Gibson again. We're on forward. Look at Maloney on the left. That is Carnegie on the right. They're diving through again over the grass. They don't even bother to use this race straight to the grass. And Gibson back in third place. Bell and fourth. Then it's Monday coming through in the little fiesta. Steve Moody, I should say. But back onto that loose. And look, and looking from but these the two quick guys have definitely got these things sorted. And Gibson back in third at this stage. But Maloney's just not giving it up. And Gibson right off uh, onto the dirt there on the exit as he starts another lap. But this is the new car, the Focus, with old parts, it has to be said, because really what they've done is rebuilt the WRC Escort in this new shaped car. And so the car behind him is very similar mechanically. This is the third heat. This is all important. Who's the quick one here? We'll make the first throw of the grid. Check a flag comes out and they wait in anticipation. Dermot Kanigi wins two of the heats. Who's your biggest rival today? Well, Tony Bell and obviously Lawrence Gibson, Lawrence being the local man here and um, he's very good on the track here and also John Maloney who, who you can never rule out. Oh, there's some great lads like Dermot is, is always a handful, um, Lawrence is going terribly well and a few of the lads from across the water are uh, very very good. Everybody in the class you know is capable of winning but uh, Probably be Tony Bell, he won the first round, and maybe Dermot if he's got the focus sorted out. But I hope to be there myself. Away they go, this final, and they're side by side with the man with the nose ahead, or was he ahead? Was Maloney. They've had contact, and unfortunately, out goes Maloney. And look where we end up. I think he's gone slightly the wrong side there, but I think because he actually. We'll have a look again. You can see Maloney spins out. Dermot has to go sideways and cuts the corner, but lets Gibson up into second place. So it's that man again, Gibson. I think Maloney's race is run. We're looking for Barty in the background. There he is, the third place man, but I think it's going to be between the, you can see the marks on the side of Dermot's car there for himself and John Maloney had a rubber match. But just look at the way this Gibson man controlled this little metro in there. Very tight, down to this quick chicane, over the grass. He goes straight through, straight lines it and pulls about five car lengths. And this is where he really gets on the bumper of Carnegie. Of course, if you're out front in rally cross, you've got a huge advantage. But this focus isn't quite handling right yet. It's far too tail happy. You'll see it kicks out uh, at this part of the circuit. But, and it's just done it. It's just done it. He's blown the lead. We can see from inside Gibson's car. He went far too sideways. It's the opportunity that Lawrence Gibson was praying for. Once the tail came out, he never lifted. You saw the little metric just take off. And whatever way Dermot set the car up for this final, it definitely the bias, I think, on the drive on this four-wheel machine is, seems to be towards the front because the tail seems to be stepping out. And this is playing into the hands of the man that is about 150 less brake 
100 horsepower but equal driving ability. It's a dry day and the Focus should be able to make it up as it virtually destroys our curb camera there. Way, way back in third place. A very disappointing run indeed for Tony Bell today. Not getting a lot of points in the British Championship. This is six laps and would you believe they're going to cover these six laps in a little less than three minutes but at the moment I think Dermot is getting the grips with his tail out not quite as aggressive gets it out onto the line he's having another look now the speed of the focus in this straight line is absolutely amazing Gibson can do nothing about it except outdrive him in the tight bits you'll see this right on the boot no room for getting by there Dermot trying to get it in as tight as possible this is where he lost it just when he hits the pump it gets a little on stable you can see Gibson can pull that few car lengths but once they get down to the quick bit again he's all over the boot of it getting in onto the loose again watch for the little chicane and just coming out of these uh, right hand left hand and right hand corners that's the big overtaking opportunity now Dermot's got to get that 680 brake horsepower down on the road with the four wheel drivers going for the inside he's alongside the touching getting nestle him out of the way Gibson's resisting him he pushes him back this is real rally cross, body bumping the ethics. Well, it's one all I reckon at the moment in that match. You can see the right hand side of Gibson car, the left hand side of uh, Germans. He tried coming in on the right hand side, but Gibson kept him out. Next corner, checkered flag, win for Gibson. from the Mighty Men to the Mini Men and the Modifieds. Do you remember how to drive them? No, it's a long time since we've been in one, but we'll just take a run out of the tape. It remains to be seen whether Dennis will be taking a run at it or if everybody else will be taking a run at him. This is basic rally cross. The cars are only slightly modified with their original steel bodies. No fancy Kevlar here. And so to the heats, or should it be the white heats in this instance? Watch all these guys, they really enjoy themselves, but it's all very serious as you can see. Out we go there, number 55, one of our main man, Nick Friedenham, but he's out of it. And, but this is only a heat, so he can make his way all the way back. But who's that we see there, number 59? He has gone through again at the back of the field. And when you lose this amount of time, it's hard to catch it up again. Down through the loose, but still on this very, very quick rally cross circuit here out onto the tarmac and it's very tight as they turn in again onto the loose and under steering the little minis oh 59 richard wakeling in trouble again but uh low cost motorsport as we said the original steel bodies and uh just about the 1293 engine that has been used for years number 21 there just going through picture that's sean smith just taking a place there we're back into another heat. Again, three rows of men on board this time with Dennis Biggerstaff. On the, the little bit of wheel spin there as the front two just get sideways. Remember, a little sharp right and someone just dived up the outside. Is that Smith again? No, it's 45. So this time he's lost the place looking up the inside but getting used to it all the time. Brake lights in the back window to save Mr. Biggerstaff taking them out. Off the loose, onto the concrete. It was John Binks who just snuck ahead of bigger stuff there. 101, that's Dave Brody. And off they go on another lap and contact there between the two. 45 is in big trouble. That's Binks again going down the road backwards. But uh, what's this? I don't think he's impressed. Let's go from red to green. We're on heat three now. And remember, the best times out of the heat get you your place in the final. Absolute gaggle of mini trying to narrow into this little chicane after the start-finish line. That's where a lot of the trouble happens. Number 12 there, Dave Skinner going well. But number 55, Friedman. Friedman, who is really one of the hot favorites here this afternoon. 101, Brody. 21, Sean Smith. Look out for them. 
You can see what happens there. There's our onboard man, Dennis Biggestaff. You come in off the loose much too quick, understeer, and you lose that whole tight corner. Brody just having a look at the back there. We're cutting the grass there. Biggestaff getting used to this. He gets up across. Everybody having a push and a bang as they go through there. That's 21. That's Sean Smith taking a very tight line and a nice look down the inside. And it's still at 101. Dave Brody's got to contend with. And in front of these, remember, our camera car. Dennis Biggestaff, that's our leader. Freeding him out there in the lead. The battle down the side, the door there of Biggestaff's car. Oh, a little understeer out, lose a bit of time. Getting back on the concrete, you can see what happened. That's Smith again trailing that line, but all fairly even. Paul Cotton right in behind Biggestaff there in the black and white car, number 17, and then number 21, Sean Smith try to shatter them. Naturally, we're concentrating on this, but there's the leader, Friedenham, way out in his own now, number 55, heading towards the checkered flag. And so to the mini-cross final. And on board again with Biggerstaff, to a right, number 22 there, David Binks. Coming into the first chicane. Got to watch out for it here. Dennis Biggest have a long time since he's rally crossed a mini. He's in Metro 6R4s these days, but they're all safely through. You can see a little bit of wheel spin there, cost him about three places, but he's in in the gaggle. 47 going wide out over the cars. It will be locking up, and look at that right on the inside there. A major one, and Bigger Staff loses it as well. Bigger Staff lost it was Jamie Hickman in the tyres there. And, oh, that's a huge accident. Sean Smith, number 21, on his roof. Let's hope he's not hurt. We see the replay. The car lost traction. It just headbutted the barrier at huge speed. And I'm sure there's going to be red flags. Got to stop that one. And this is, again, a rerun pole position, man. Having a look at that inside line again. That's the safest place to be. You can just drive across the grass if you're in trouble. And on the outside, again, bigger staff cuts the first part of the S onto the loose, gets it slightly sideways and throws it all away. I wonder, did he get a little nudge there? We didn't actually see it, but bigger staff is well and truly out of it. There he is. So his day ending, I'm afraid. But it's going to be a very good day for Nicholas Friedman. Friedman heading towards the checkered flag and the final win. So we move from the minis to the modifieds, and with big Irish interest in this round of the British Championship. Escorts, Peugeots, Fiestas, and, would you believe it, a beautiful, beautiful Porsche. Has Mike Warner gone clean, man? Yeah, makes the 3.3 turbocharged car, about 450 brake horsepower on standard boots still. Um, we've got a lot to do to it, but we'll get in there. Michael, oh Michael, what have you done? Gone out to play with your beautiful toy with these madmen. Now we're on board there with bags, and I watch this man at his work. It will keep you fit with the arms, but there is that beautiful Porsche up front. Turns it in, the guy gets it a little wide, he just nips up the inside and gets the door closed, but it'd be a shame to put a mark on it. But what a drive, we lose yet another place. That's Paul Broach, I think, in the 205. He's never true. Getting used to this, a lot of power, a lot of loose. Again, another super start, and just look at the part. Oh, catches Davy Francis there, I think it is in the escort. Pushes him out of the way and just the sheer power of the Porsche gets himself through. We're looking backwards from Davy Francis here in the middle of the action. It's George Toll is out in front and then this Porsche, which is getting little lumps, huh? knocked over all the time, but Francis assaults it in the biggest possible way. Takes a bite out of the back right hand wing of the Porsche and destroys it, but we've got to have another rerun. Off we go again, as David Patton there in the escort. You can hear the screams of the escort trying to get into this corner. They're rubbing paint and bouncing wings, and he's down to third place. That's that little 205 again. This man is really flying. So Paul Roach uh, ahead of the superstar uh, Little Opal, and there it comes through. Bregs in third place, looking for a gap through. Roach takes the lead, Patton is in second, and then we're on board with the third place one. This is going to be a hot heat of the Piano RHC Ferries Grand Prix. 
You can see just how he's milking it and just taking bites out of the back of it. But there's that little 205. This is a super little car and a very, very good pilot indeed. Dust and dirt, but you can just about see where you're going. Up over the hill, they're turning right on the tarmac and then onto the loose. You can see, you go wide at all, you're down the inside. Don't even move, buddy, I'm coming through. So Beggs takes another victory in this famous car, but others are less fortunate. the final. You can see all mixtures here. 304, Seamus Murphy in the Escort, and 491, Alan Tapscott in the Nova, and a cheeky little Metro there, number 13. What a number to have, but look at these guys really working on the loose. And it is indeed Seamus Murphy from that little Nova, taking a bite out of the boot. A Nova and an Escort? My goodness. So the Irishman leads the English visitors, and we're on board with another Irishman, Davy Francis, in fourth place at the moment, watching this titanic up front. He's watching the boot of that Metro and there's the little knob and look at how quickly he can throw it in and look at how much he can gain on the Escort. Down into a very tight one, out to the left, over the curb. Francis on board again, using that gear, up a gear, clips the curb. Doesn't want to run too wide, doesn't want to miss out on any traction. They're down now. Now watch the man, the blue and yellow on the inside. It's McCardle versus Patton, this one. One bite, misses out. Now watch where he goes right around behind behind the hoarding the sign and comes back out in the middle of the pack. Goodbye. Peter McArdle then in the hijinks. Meanwhile, back with Davy Francis and uh, he's still as close as ever to the top three and the top three couldn't be closer. No, but just look at this. I'm amazed at the traction right on the tail of it and sitting in the background. A little bit of slip and clutch there, I think, from Davy Francis, but he's working hard again, Patton, trying to get the tail out to take another bite back. And is he going to do it? He is. That makes us one all. And it makes us both out, unfortunately, both losing out of that manoeuvre. They won't be happy about that. Once again, it's been a sort of red flag day, and that's what's happening here. And so, there they stopped them. It was the little Nova had got ahead, but unfortunately all to no avail. And there's the damage, and not a very happy man indeed, David Patton. So, another start and another jump start. It's Gordon Rogers in the line. Green car responsible this time. He's made contact with the Porsche. There's more bits off it. That's Roach, is it? Uh, Roach, in fact, right through the barriers. We see it again here. Another big accident here at Nuts Corner today. What a day the Land Motor Club are having. Rogers out through that. Well, it's not really a barrier, it's just a fence, and there's not a happy man. Paul Broach, the one we've been singing the praise, but he's out, he won't be starting. A restart, they watch it up that inside. We're watching for 444, the little man, Mike Dresser, in the Metro. Will he do well? Look at these cars. They start the morning immaculate. By midday, there's a few little marks, and by the end of the day, some of them are already secondhand, but watch a 001 in the Corsa. David Ward, watch this man at work in a little course. I keep going on about the Novas and the courses, but they are absolutely amazing. Up and he's against... pulled off, he's pulled off the favourite there, Davy Ward, pulled off at the top of the course. We're looking backwards now from our onboard camera, and here is the battle. Mike Dresser there in the Metro, just look at the way this little car sits on the tarmac, onto the loose, he's getting it really wound up. The man in the background? Yes, it is. That man begs again in the Aster, taking a bite out of the boot. But the little Metro is holding him on, onto the loose. Well done, keeps it well together. And they're through the checkered flag. 